Welcome to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. This podcast is for NP students studying to pass their NP certification exam. Getting to the correct test answers means breaking down the exam questions themselves. Expert Fitzgerald faculty clinicians share their knowledge and experience to help you dissect the anatomy of a test question so you can better understand how to arrive at the correct test answer. So, if you're ready, let's jump right in. When performing a psychiatric assessment of an elderly patient with Alzheimer's disease, the psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner recognizes that A, the most important part of the history will come from the caregiver, or B, the patient must be interviewed alone to preserve the privacy of the relationship, or C, a sexual history is not necessary in patients who are not sexually active, or D, age often defines the character of transference in the patient-provider relationship. So this is clearly an assessment question. In fact, it tells you right off in the first line when performing a psychiatric assessment. And as you look at the answer choices, they really are all relevant to assessment directly. And so we have to choose from among the best answer of those provided. When you are performing a psychiatric assessment of an elderly patient with Alzheimer's disease, the answer is B. The patient must be interviewed alone to preserve privacy of the relationship. Patients with Alzheimer's disease, like any other adult patient, are entitled to privacy of the relationship. And so B is the correct answer. Even in clearly impaired patients, those patients for whom the cognitive decline is is really rather um, advanced, Um, At that point, a big part of the history may come from a caregiver, but even still, the patient should be interviewed alone to preserve the privacy of the relationship and allow the patient the opportunity to discuss things that he or she would not perhaps discuss in front of others, uh, things like suicidal or paranoid ideation. Remember that Alzheimer's disease is a long, slow, steady trajectory. For the overwhelming majority of Alzheimer's disease, the patients are very aware of their circumstances. They are aware of their cognitive deficits. They are, however, adults. They enjoy life on a daily basis. They interact with family and friends. They're very aware of their feelings, their concerns, their disturbances, and they are adults. And sometimes they don't want to share some of those more private feelings in front of caregivers who are many times adult children, or or sometimes they just want to be regarded as important. They want to be regarded as adults and important contributors to their health care. And so at any point in the trajectory of Alzheimer's disease, even when the disease is more advanced, uh, while some of the history may come from a caregiver, perhaps even most of the relevant history may come of the caregiver, it is still equally important that the patient with Alzheimer's disease be interviewed alone, that their contribution uh, is recognized as important. And in fact, their contribution to the chief complaint may even be more important than what anyone else can tell you. Remember, whenever you get history from another party, it's always once removed, despite the best intentions of that caregiver to relay information as accurately and unfiltered as they can. It's just the nature of the beast. It's just going to be filtered to some extent. So getting information from the patient will always be important, and preserving privacy for that patient is enormously important. A sexual history is important, as history and fantasies might contribute to the current issue. Even if the patient is not sexually active, that doesn't mean that they don't have an active fantasy life or that they have a history that might be contributory. So yes, absolutely, a sexual history is important. And finally, age doesn't specifically define the character of transference. Transference can occur at any point in the lifespan, including the older adult. Older patients may react to the psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner as a parent to a child, as a grandparent to a grandchild, as one sibling to the other, or even peer to peer. But age does not define the character of transference. Transference can occur at any place in the lifespan. Thank you for listening to NP Certification Q&A presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. And for more NP resources, visit fhea.com.